episode 3 of our Will of Africa tour of Botswana, we explore the Mbabe Depression. We then continue further north towards the Chobe National Park. Thus far, we have had some incredible sightings in the few days we've spent in the country, and we were looking forward to the next chapter of the tour. We were back at Camp Chuvarecha after a morning game drive. Uh, Dirk Smith, we are having egg and bacon and cheese sandwiches and we've also got a little thin uh, I think it's a venison sausage that we're gonna fry up as well your typical mid-morning on the go breakfast you look tired Nick no, no I'm not I'm, I'm so chilled out bro I'm just you chilled bro I'm chilled bro. no long kiff bro <laughs> <laughs> After brunch, we had a lovely little nap. It's very hot here, it's about 38, 39 degrees. So you try and take a nap, but it's quite hot. And then you take a shower to cool off, and then you try and sleep again. But we did uh, manage to rest the eyes, but now we're on our way to the depression. Thank you, Christo, for a nice yes, cold Coke. And we're gonna be looking for some animals again. Let's do it. Let's hope we see some great sightings. I mean, lions this morning. We had amazing elephants, giraffe, and the depression is just, it's beautiful. It's very, very beautiful. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay, we just drove into the eastern edge of the Mababi depression. And this area that's just grassland is the area that at some times would get water. Something changed in the last two years that the water not running around this island here. But from 2008 until 2017, there was permanently water in this little piece of grass next to us. On this specific game drive, we were looking for big herds of buffalo. We found our first bunch. Christian then informed the group that there is a big competition looming. This is the site where we have international competitions. The largest I ever had was 25 countries participating in poop spitting or pop troll spook like the other, you guys would know it. <laughs> so I think we have three teams here, World of Africa, Iron Man, and the unofficial Toyota team. While Dirk and myself will capture the event for posterity. Hmm. Bring it on. Bring it's it. real. Go fight. Go fight. What see you? I'm going to get a good one. I'm going to get a good one. Do I have to put buckets in my mouth now? Do it for Iron Man. stage was set for the international poo spitting competition. Well, it's yet another unbelievable afternoon with Will of Africa putting poo in his mouth. Awesome. 
really so hot. And also, many things in your mouth. You don't have to kill off. And the winner, Will of Africa. Hey, hey! But I saw Will pulling that massive elephant lung in it. Let's go, Pad Longer. Dr. Christian spotted a massive herd of buffalo in the distance, but we had some rough terrain to clear to get to them. We found them, all 1,200 of them. seen as many buffalo as this. It's about 1,500 strong. Will reckons. And Christian reckons it's 925.5. Who is the count? Who is the count? But I, I have to say it's one of the most special sightings I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen so many buffalo in one place. We were very fortunate because we saw lion, we saw about 1,250 buffaloes, and we had only us spending time with those beautiful sightings. So that was really special. It was our last night in the depression and also our last night with Dr. Winterbach. It was exceptional having someone with so much knowledge on tour with us. So we ended up doing this trip with Iron Man and a few other people because you are conservation minded and as a conservation professional it's good to have contacts with people that are willing to put their money where their mouth is as far as conservation is going and provide support in various ways to make our life easier to get the job done on the ground. Morning Jack. Morning Mick. How are you this morning? I'm good thank you and how are you? Um, uh, all things considered I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Long, long drive today. Uh, well, no. Not long as in distance, but long as in time. Um, but it's going to be awesome. Epic, as has been every day on this trip uh, thus far. It's been really, really great. So, uh, just sorting a couple of things out mid trip, reorganizing, restashing as you should. Uh, you need to be able to find everything all the time. So, a bit of OCD and all the rest of it. So, that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, let's have some coffee and some rusks. Hit the road. This morning we are moving from the Jovega uh, hunting concession into Sabuti, which is part of the Chobi National Park. Uh, we're going to go through the Mababi Gate, where we're going to pay our fees, and then uh, it's about a 55, 60 kilometers in deep sand today. First section we're going to do the uh, western side of the depression, and then onto the Sandridge Road. Many a trailer came stuck. Fortunately today we've got no trailers, so it will actually go quite well. 
This evening we're going to have a lack of dinner, lack of briar around the fire, and then tomorrow we're going to go through the Kasani. gate to Savuti is quite intense. It's got a thick sand and it's very bumpy as you can see. So it's uh, it's working the suspension properly. to a hot Savuti campsite. It's nice and hot at the campsite and we are just chilling here today. We're not going on any, on any game drives. But I'm dumping footage and we've shot, I think it's almost 250 gigs in about four days. Now people who take photographs or even do video would know <laughs> that's a lot of footage and it's 4K, so. But it, it looks good. Hope you guys are enjoying it still. You're not gonna get away from the camera. I don't know why you keep trying. Tina, can you just give me the thank you? Everyone? Tina, the more you try it, the worse yeah. it will get. Just, 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 just. I'm gonna put no sprint. <laughs> we are in the Savuti at the RSV3 campsite, uh, close to the uh, ablution block. This is actually blockaded for elephants. You won't believe yeah. how they actually got those uh, toilets. Yeah. We've got a fantastic donkeys by Stian here today, um, oh, courtesy wait. of Mr. Haman and Mr. Van der Merwe. Sure, sure, sure. And then, on the other side, we've got a beautiful Cedarburg Chenin Blanc 2021 20, um, for Miss Fitzsimmons like from the uh, States. So we are going to have a lovely Very lunch. Uh, we're going to oh. have some uh, crackers, there's some cheese, and there's cold meats, wraps, and sauces. So today is chill day in the camp. Absolutely, I think that everybody deserves it. Where's the pool? We've had a really, really long day's drive, although it was only about 110 kilometers, but it was deep sand, backwards and forwards, up and over. Making some wraps with cold meats, cheese, tomato, olives, gherkins, some good wine. Yes. What, what is tomato? Tomato, tomato. Tomato, 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 tomato. Same thing, salad, tomato, and associate. The afternoon off spending time with your overlanding family was just what we needed. Just a little bit of dust. This morning we're going to drive in a northerly direction. We're going to go through the Savuti. Uh, we've passed the Savuti marsh yesterday on, the, on our right hand side, and today is just going to be Mpornifelt. And then we're going to go through the Chobi Forest onto Ngoma Gate, and then from Ngoma Gate we're going to turn right towards uh, Kasani, where we will be staying at the Pangolin Photography Lodge tonight. So, really looking forward to it. We're going to have some water activities this afternoon. Beautiful meal by uh, Chef Robson awaits us, so we are really, really ready to go. Uh, we've got about a 
160 kilometers today, 162 there about. Deep sand again uh, for about 75 kilometers. And then we're going to hit Tar Road, and then from there onwards it's plain sailing and down to the side. Lucky. Ching ching. A quick stop at the Savuti International Airstrip to test some aviation knowledge. Okay, well, Dirk, you know, here we are at the Savuti International Airport Terminal 5. We actually parked at Gate 3. Uh, we're just taking a group photo here today. This airport is actually quite busy in the season. A lot of people are arriving from Maun, and um, Savuti is very popular for their lions. They've got, uh, they call it Maxi Prides. Uh, but yeah, we are on our way to Kasani, and uh, we thought we'll just come and say hello to the International Airport. MTR04 coming in for landing. <laughs> tower come in, tower come in. Tower don't be lazy. <laughs> so it's MTR on downwind, check. MTR on final, MTR landing. MTR cleared of the runway. <laughs> Boom. Get in. And I wonder how many times it landed that 777 on on anything. <laughs> we, we prefer asphalt. <laughs> if you haven't been to Kasani, it is one of the bucket list things you have to do in uh, Botswana. It's a wild, wild little town um, on the banks of the Chobi River, and the Chobi National Park uh, is also bordering the town. And it's one of those places where it's really, really wild Africa. The, the border for Zimbabwe and uh, Zambia is not too far from there, the Kazangula uh, border post. But today we're going from uh, Savuti towards Kasane and we've just got under 200 kilometers to go. But it's going to take about six hours because we've got some deep sand to travel so you can't really uh, get up to speed. We had a beautiful party last night and I'm looking forward to going to Pangolin. I've always heard about uh, Pangolin Safaris. They're a company that specialize in photography on the banks of the Chobe. So you've got these amazing seats, amazing swivel arms for your cameras. It is a, a photographer's paradise. on a nice rough 4x4 road, the sand had its first victim. Mick and Christu took out a recovery rope to try and pull Will's cruiser out of the thick sand, but that didn't work. and monster winch that seldomly gets used was brought to action and in no time Will was free. We're about 90 or 80 kilometers from Kasane and we're driving on a road with a beautiful marsh on the left hand side but on the road itself is just elephant poop everywhere and that's one of the most special things here in Botswana is you get elephants crossing the highway and yeah just look at that marsh. to stop over for a quick refreshment at one of Will's favorite spots. Now we are having a, a, a refreshment at Mawanda um, View. 
And if you look out towards you on your left, um, this is part of the Lunyanti Marsh on the northern side. And uh, you've got a lot of cattle out there. And often you'll have elephant drinking water right in front of you at the lodge. And also sometimes zebras and any other animals. So, yeah. I always stop here if we can't have any place in Safuji. So we'll drive from the Kwai straight through to here. Uh, about 10, 11 hour drive. Photo Safaris is one of my personal dream destinations. The lodge is beautiful and the accommodation spectacular. I was super excited to stay here and get out onto the water. My name is Guts, everyone knows me as Guts Swanapool from Pangolin Photo Safaris and I'm one of the co-owners of Pangolin Photo Safaris. So Pangolin Photo Safaris started about 11, 12 years ago. Um, we were doing photographic safaris in Kruger Park. I met a guy called Toby German, um, which is now my business partner. We decided to start another photographic company coming to Botswana, um, have boats, have vehicles, all kitted out for photographers, and do just photographic safaris. And almost have a photographic safari and run photographic safaris hosted by photographers, which is very important. There's a lot of guys trying to do photo safaris, but they're not really photo photographers themselves. So that was the idea. And then when we were in Kasani, up here in northern Botswana on the Chobe River, we used to stay at a lot of different accommodation on, on the Chobe River. Sadly, people don't really understand photographers. There's your breakfast. That time, you have to be back by then. You cannot have brunch. You can only have one coffee before you leave or that kind of thing. So we decided, no, we need our own accommodation where we can have our own guest doing the safaris the way we want. We come back whenever we need to radio the hotel and tell them, okay, now we're ready for brunch. If there's a great sighting, bring us food outside, whatever. So yeah, cater for photographers. Pangolin Photo Safaris is one of the most special safari operators out here in Botswana because we specialize in photographic safaris. We supply our guests with cameras and when they come visiting us, if they don't have their own camera, they get one. Um, all our vehicles, all our boats are 100% outkitted and outfitted for photography. And that's why we go out there, we take pictures. We don't need to look for lions and leopards and buffaloes all the time. We can take great pictures of dragonflies, of birds, of fish, whatever. So we are here for photography. This afternoon, you will be doing a boat cruise on the river. You'll be with Tidi and Garabo, right? Tidi will be your guide and then Garabo will be your photo host. He'll be coming in at 2.30 to introduce himself to you and to tell you more about our cameras, the kind of cameras we have, and if you have any cameras, the kind of cameras that you guys have, and you guys will chat about that. Okay, 3 p.m. you leave for your activity down at the river, and our activities normally run for three and a half hours, so you're usually back here at the lodge at 6.30, quarter to seven, and you have dinner on the deck at 7.30. After a midday snack, we set off to our photographic boat for a game cruise. We're now going to go on to our boat right for the afternoon. Really looking forward to it. It was a lovely drive this morning. Lots of deep sand. Got stuck. Uh, but now, looking forward to, to have some time on the water. And it's, when you get there, you'll see what I mean. It is really, really special. Uh, looking forward to work with Garabu, my friend, again. And, uh, and then obviously tonight a beautiful dinner, so yeah, see you, see you on the other side. Karabo is our photographic guide. He teaches you on framing, shutter speed and how to take an all-round good photo. I'll be here to take care of your photographic needs. Uh, CD is going to be helping us with the guiding, okay? Before we start with anything, I just want us to talk about one or two things that are very important to, to the possibility of this activity. We need to talk about safety, okay? Your safety on the boat, our safety on the river, okay? So we are going to be moving very slowly to take care of you. Uh, we're going to come to a complete stop, anchor the boat against the river bank, okay? Switch off the engine and then give you a chance to work on your images, okay? However, 
We are going to adhere to one or two rules when we are next to our sightings, okay? We don't make noise, we don't provoke our animals to get the ultimate shows that we want. The thrill is in waiting and waiting, and then eventually, you know, the animal will just get used to us and then start behaving normally and then we can work on it, okay? We are also going to be giving our subjects a little bit of space, okay, so that we don't encroach into their uh, comfort zone, okay? We are going to respect them so that they respect us back. So we are going to use this zoom lens, this Sigma zoom lens is a 150 to 600 to try and compensate for the distance that will be lost between the boat and then the, the subject, okay? And then inside I've got a memory card here with a 16 GB memory card that you are going to take home with after everything is done here, okay? So I'm going to try and encourage you to fill it up, but fill it up in a meaningful way. Don't just uh, go crazy on the shutter like this, otherwise you'll fill it up very fast. <laughs> so I want you to try and be a little bit creative. Let's say we encounter an elephant. You can get a full shot of the elephant and then start breaking it down into many pieces. You can do the eye, the eyelashes, the trunk, the tusk, the skin, the texture, the color, the patterns there, the feet, the tail, okay? That's how you, you break down your subject. We look for behavior in animals, feeding behavior, bonding behavior, grooming behavior, fighting, you know, or maybe there's a kill. That's what you want to do, okay? Finally, I am on a pangolin safari boat, one of my biggest dreams ever. And I'm here, privileged. This is amazing, super excited. Yeah, absolutely. The most incredible thing happened. We spotted a group of female lions from the boat who were on a hunt. Just when we thought this trip can't get any better, we just spotted a lion with cubs. It's a wonderful sighting. The females then locked their eyes on a warthog grazing and they took the opportunity to attack. It's not an easy thing to see, but at least we know the cubs and the females have a fresh meal. They took down a water right in front of us. My video skills weren't that great because shooting out of hand uh, is not so stable. The photo guys got some amazing pictures. But I've got the video, it's there, so you can see. But uh, it's my first hunt ever. It was an amazing experience. Jeez. I'm still a bit flabbergasted. In the next and final episode, we spend our remaining time on the banks of the Chobe National Park with pangolin photo safaris.